Uh, welcome to the Grand Prairie City Council meeting for Monday, September 8th, 2020. Um, we are doing a mixed version of our meeting with uh, eight, uh, sorry, seven of us here in council chambers, uh, spaced distant, so it'll look a little bit different on camera than it has in the past. And we have Councillor Minhas and Councillor Blackburn both joining us by Zoom. So uh, if everybody just uh, bears with us as we go through our first iteration of this mixed media, mixed method of city council. Um, but we'll get our meeting underway and we'll start as we always do with our national anthem. O oh, Canada, our home and native land, true patriot love in all of us command. With glowing hearts we see the rise, the true north strong and free. From far and wide, O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. God, keep our land glorious and free. O oh Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Canada, we stand on guard for thee. Thank you to the National Film Board for the images of our country and to an alumni of our very own Grand Prairie Boys Choir for the audio. Um, we will move into the adoption of previous council meeting minutes. We've got a couple sets of previous meeting minutes, if I could have a motion to adopt those. I see Councillor O'Toole. Councillor O'Toole, go ahead. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I move that Council adopt the minutes of the City Council meeting held Monday, August 24th, 2020, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Are there any errors or omissions that we need to correct before we adopt them? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favour? And I see all council members in favor, including Councillor Minhas. Uh, Councillor Blackburn uh, is not at his station, and so uh, he will be recorded as uh, uh, absent for that vote. And we'll move on to item 3.2, special council meeting minutes. Councillor Minhas. Yeah. Thank you, Mayor Given, and uh, move the council adopt the minutes of special city committee a city Council meeting held on Monday, August 31st, 2020, as presented. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Minhas. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Are there any errors or omissions we need to correct before we adopt them? And I don't see anybody raising their hand, making it easier on me. Thank you very much. Uh, so I'll call for the vote on that set of minutes. All those in favour? Thank you, and I see all Council members in favour. That motion passes unanimously. Uh, and we'll move on to the adoption of the agenda. Councillor Clayton. Thanks, Mayor. Given I would move that Council adopt the agenda as presented. Okay. Thanks very much, Councillor Clayton. Any discussion or debate on the agenda as presented? Again, seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favour? And again, that is a unanimous vote. I see all Council members voting in favour. Okay, uh, this brings us to the open delegation portion of our agenda. This is an opportunity that we have at every regular city council meeting for any member of the public to present to council. It's actually one of two opportunities that we have. We have our scheduled delegation uh, portion of our agenda in our evening session. Um, but I understand that we did have uh, at least one person uh, this afternoon that wished to present to council. Uh, I think I see uh, Aiden McIsaac. Aiden, if you're there, I will invite you to turn on your camera and microphone that sort of counts as joining us at the presenters table in this digital world. Hi Aiden. Um, and uh, we will uh, bring up on screen if you can see it. Uh, there's a five minute timer and we'll invite you to give your uh, five minute presentation and followed by any questions that council might have for you. Go ahead. Awesome. Can you hear me? Yes, we can. Perfect. Um, Usually I get to see all your smiling faces, but I don't see many of your faces today as I scroll through the, the Zoom thing. 
Um, so for lack, uh, just for communication here, I am going to take this off just so I can use my lovely smile and I hope I can see all of yours as well. Um, I know it's an important, important part of communication. Um, yeah, so it's nice to see you all. All right, I see the timer has begun. <laughs> so I understand that there's also an opportunity for you all to ask questions to me. Um, so that'll be fun. That's my favorite part to kind of get my cognition going. Um, I am sitting outside and it is beautiful. What a beautiful day. Sky, I love the sky out here. Beautiful sunshine. It's really awesome that I can sit outside and be a part of this. I'm very grateful for that. Um, so yeah, masks. I didn't realize, but I'm actually sitting just at the library here outside and there's quite a few people with some signs and some freedom of choice to use their voice, which is kind of cool. Um, yeah, Zoom is interesting. It, it, I can't get your, your audio feedback while I'm talking, but we'll see how it goes. So um, I'm an educator. Um, I am a carer. I'm a community member. I'm a minority, I'm a human, and we all share this airspace, right? Like this infinite amount of beautiful air, fresh air. And I can't help but think about some of the things that happen amongst adults in politics as parallel to what happens on the schoolyard in schools when there's bullying and exclusion, I guess. We want to pride ourselves on being an inclusive. Got some beeping going on in the background. Um, like I moved to Grand Prairie and the thing that brought me here was the immense amount of creativity and innovation and new ways of thinking and focusing on community and inclusion, adaptability for everyone to just sort of feel whole. And I think that a really important part of you know, that priority that we talk about. Let me just turn on my other screen here. To do with the priority. Um, protection of health of the general, protection and health of the general public. So mental health and our sense of autonomy plays into that so much. And at first I thought, wow, did our government really just put all of this on our city municipal council? Like, is this on their shoulders now? Um, and then I thought, wow, <laughs> they have given us the freedom to make this choice. They have asked us to decide what is best for our bubble. And we get to be a part of that. And we get to bring ourselves into that bubble. And we get to state what's called a boundary. And if you think way back to birds and the bees, bodily autonomy, consent culture, boundaries. What are the bees? Boundaries. <laughs> And how do, you, how do you set your boundaries and how do you respect your own and how do you respect other people? And when we think back to that schoolyard parallel with bullying and you know wanting people to get along and lift each other up and empower them, there's a lot of data and research in caring and education and social work that it's not good to um, restrict freedom, but yet empower with choice. So I want to share with you an idea that came to me last night, and then hopefully we can do some question and answering around it. And I just, I felt compelled to share sitting here on this bench at my favorite place in Grand Prairie, the public library. So that's awesome. <laughs> um, what if we had a visible boundary such that if you are a person who feels very at risk, or very unsafe, and if you have any questions about what it feels like to feel unsafe leaving your house, I'm sure we're all experiencing it now, you can ask any minority, um, they will tell you that, yeah, it's, it's a privilege to walk out of your house and feel sure of what you're going to do, or feel you know, a sense of confidence. Um, so if we had a visible barrier that said, this is me, this is my boundary, and I'm asking you to respect that, I need the six feet recommended, or you have to wear a mask if you come within my bubble of that. Colored mask, everybody knows, we educate, we advocate, we inform this, our community of Grand Perry, and everyone gets on this interaction of respect and consent 
And if they don't, we can identify as adults and community members what bullying looks like. And if we start to identify bullying, then we use the bylaw that we already have in effect, which is the bylaw against bullying. Then we let that take care of itself and together we will strengthen and empower by choice. And I just think that if we delay and defer just a little bit, we might be able to get innovative the way that I know Grand Prairie is in my heart. Yeah, thank you, Aiden. That's, uh, you did that really well within your five minutes. The timer just hit zero just as you're concluding there. Well done. Uh, any thank questions you. for the delegation? Um, Aiden, I'm looking at our council members, and I know that you can't see all of us, but we can see you. Uh, council members, any questions for Aiden? I don't see any from my council members in the council chambers um, or from my council members on Zoom. So, uh, Aiden, thanks very much for making the time to make the presentation to council today. Thanks, everyone. Enjoy your beautiful day. Thank you. <laughs> Bye. Okay, uh, I will uh, invite you then, uh, Aiden, you can turn off your camera and your mic. You're more than welcome to listen in, um, but if you turn off your camera and your mic, uh, that's sort of the same as exiting the council table. And uh, I will just check in with the city clerk to see if there was anybody else that was intending to present in the uh, initial delegation section of our agenda. Arlene, was there anybody else that was intending to present uh, in the afternoon session? Thank you, Mayor Given. Uh, we have no other delegations identified uh, for presentation this afternoon. Okay, okay, thank you. Thanks very much, Arlene. Uh, that being the case, uh, we will return to a delegation section of our agenda uh, for afternoon session uh, starting around six o'clock. Uh, so we'll move into uh, our regular council agenda and committee business, starting with item 7.1. Uh, Council Committee of the Whole from Monday, August 31st. I'd look for a motion to adopt that set of minutes. Councillor Thiessen. Thank you very much, Mayor Given. I would move that uh, Council adopt the minutes of the Council Committee of the Whole meeting held on my birthday, Monday, August 31st, 2020, as presented. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Thiessen. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Are there any errors or omissions that we need to adjust before we adopt them? I don't see anybody identifying any, so then I will call for the vote. All those in favor of adopting that set of minutes? And I see all council members uh, in the chambers and uh, Councillor Minhas on Zoom, all voting in favor of that set of minutes. Uh, Councillor Blackburn is away from his station and so he'll be uh, recorded as uh, absent and, and no vote on that. So we have eight in favor of that motion. Uh, and then we go to uh, Councillor O'Toole, sorry, was there something uh, on that set of minutes? No, okay. Uh, then we'll go to item 7.2, the Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee meeting for Tuesday, September 1st. And I think Councillor Bressy, you're gonna handle that set of minutes for us. Yes, thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that Council adopt the minutes of the Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee meeting held Tuesday, September 1st, 2020, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote on the Infrastructure and Economic Development Committee minutes. All those in favor? Thank you. I see all council members in the council chambers and our two council members on Zoom voting in favor. That motion is unanimous. Uh, and that will take us to item 7.2.1, Councillor Bressy. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move the council approve an expression of interest to explore the development of the approximately 2.5 acre west half of the land located at, 90, at 9839 103rd Avenue, known as the South, Rose, South Montrose site, with the resulting opportunities to be presented to council for consideration. And just to speak to this a little bit, what this is, is on our Montrose Cultural Center site, so the where the library and the art gallery and Teresa Sargent Hall all, all are, we've got a whole bunch of bare land that gets used throughout the community but isn't developed right now just south of the, just south of the Montrose Cultural Center. And there's a master plan for that site to have a performing arts center put on the uh, thinking about my directions, put on the east side of the site, closest to City Hall, to have a big public plaza in the middle, and then to have a building of some sort built on the west side of that site. And what this expression of interest would be is going out to the market and saying, hey, are there any developers that would be interested in partnering with the city to build something that would benefit potential tenants, but also benefit our community as a whole on this site? And how this expression of interest 
process works is it's us saying, hey, who wants to partner with us? And let's talk if you do. There's If somebody does come back and say, hey, I'm interested in that land, then council has full ability to look at that and either enter into a negotiation with the person who does come forward or start a competitive, competitive process so that anybody who wants make uh, make a similar offer. There's lots of latitude for council in what we do with any offers or expressions of interest to come forward. This is just us starting the early conversation of, is there any interest in just talking about this with the city? So I would encourage council to pass this motion so that we can continue figuring out next plans for this piece of important land. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Any discussion or debate on the motion? Councillor Clayton. Thanks, Mayor Given. Um, I just, uh, I do support the motion. I just wanted to also to be clear for any public that is watching that the city may uh, at any point uh, use its discretion to not proceed with any uh, of the options that were listed above. So although there, it's an opportunity for us to see what the options and opportunities are, at any point we uh, have the right to say, sorry, this doesn't work at this time or, or based on those conditions. So it's, as uh, Councillor Bressley alluded to, it's just a really an opportunity to see what's out there without committing to something specific. Okay, thanks, Councillor Clayton. Councillor Pallott. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Uh, just a question for administration on this one, I guess. Um, under the incentives it's, it's got that we'd still have all these downtown incentives, can we just, uh, can somebody re let me know what is currently available for incentives? Um, if somebody were to apply on this piece of property? Sure, so um, I will direct that. I see that, uh, thank you, Ms. Lee is on the call and uh, as the manager of the Economic Development Department, probably best position to answer that question. Rebecca? Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, apologies, I don't have the exact number, but we have approximately $540,000 currently within the downtown incentive um, capital budget currently allocated. If you, I can uh, dig the numbers up re relatively quickly, but it's approximately within that ballpark. Okay. So I, I guess, and, and thank you for that, Ms. Lee. I just, my concern with this is if I was somebody looking at this as an expression of interest, thinking I'm doing a hundred unit mixed multi-family building, I'm gonna apply for $15,000 a door, the money's actually not there. So I'm a little bit concerned that we're actually putting on expression of interest that's showing that we have these incentives. And if I assume that I was gonna build a hundred unit apartment building, I would assume I was going to get so much in credits. We actually don't have the money to incentivize it. So I'm a little bit worried that we might be putting on an expression interest that might look a little wishy-washy. Um, so I'm a little bit concerned about that, to be honest. I, th I can't support it with that because I actually think that's a little bit disappointing. Um, <clears throat> I'd be disappointed, I guess, if I spent time and energy trying to put together site plans, everything else to come in and apply, and find out that I can't qualify for the grants because there's not enough funding to qualify for what I thought I could get. So without a little bit more um, clarity on that, I'd, I'd have a hard time supporting this policy. And I just have one more question for sure. administration. Sure, go ahead, Councillor Platt. Thanks, Mayor Gibbon. Just, um, we've got the Performing Arts Centre on this plan. Are we at any risk if we don't build this Performing Arts Centre? Again, if I'm a proponent that thinks there's going to be a major $100 million facility uh, on this piece of land, it changes my thought on what I'm going to build there. If there's no guarantee or certainty that that's going to be built there, um, it probably changes whether I want to put an expression of interest on it or not. So do we have any guarantee that that's ever going to go on there, or are we at risk as a city putting that on there? Sure. Uh, Ms. Lee? Uh, thank you, Mayor Gibbon. Through the expression of interest, we've pointed to um, the strategic plan and I and have made every attempt to, to ensure that we're fairly transparent uh, in identifying the, the eventual goal for, for the site. Um, the decision to move forward with a um, um, performing arts centre uh, would obviously be a, a public decision um, and our, our goal is to, to be as transparent and open with these conversations and this expression of interest will allow us to um, have those types of conversations and um, defer the decision back, back to council. Um, and so at this point, no, we don't see that it is a risk, uh, but are cognizant of the fact that we need to be um, transparent throughout the process in identifying um, further decision points for the Performing Arts Centre. Thanks for, sleep. Thanks for that clarity. I, I do have one more, but I've had quite a bit of mic time, so I'll just defer it for a bit. Well, uh, I don't know if I saw anybody else with any additional questions, so go ahead, Councillor Plot. All right, well, it's weird holding the mic, but maybe I'm, I'm enjoying it and I keep talking into it. So um, I'm just kind of curious if the city has any um, appetite or if we've had any discussions about what a 3P that we would want on this site. And uh, I guess where my thinking is going is if there's a city opportunity for a 3P, I would, I would, I'm wondering if we've had those discussions or if administration's identified the site as potential 3Ps. Again, thinking about industry that might want to come forward, 
if they knew we had an appetite for a seniors facility or some other facility, that could greatly change how a proponent would look at this. So I'm just wondering if administration has any proposed three Ps that they look at this site that could be part of this as well. Manager of Economic Development, Ms. Lee. Thank you, Mayor Given. Um, administration has certainly um, had conversations around what we expect may come back through. At this point, we haven't brought forward any specific recommendations. Uh, the main uh, objective of this process was to ensure that we're reflecting the intent of the Armantro site and the master plan. Uh, but we did really want to leave it to the expertise of industry in terms of what could, uh, what would make sense for them from their perspective in terms of um, supporting the vision of the plan, identifying the, the between the mixed use and the plaza site and whether there's opportunities for um, sort of a combination of. So uh, we haven't um, uh, envisioned, I guess, a specific ask at this point. Uh, we're waiting to sort of see what comes back from industry and then we'll bring that forward to council for more concrete um, decisions at that point. Okay, thanks again, Miss Lee. Thanks, Mary. Okay, thank you. Uh, any other questions? Discussion or debate before yeah, uh, that before I go to Councillor Bressy to close. Councillor Bressy. Great. Thank you. And yeah, I do appreciate the conversation that Councillor Plot raises in terms of do we have money dedicated there? Do we know what we're doing with this, with our with portion of the land rotating? I'd, I'd encourage all of Council to support this anyways. And it strikes me that those are very important questions, but those are also kind of the chicken and egg type question of, it's, I, I appreciate a developer saying, hey, I don't want to commit to this until the city's committed to its side. But also for me currently, I don't support moving forward with that performing arts center, but I might support it if all of a sudden somebody who's going to be paying a substantial amount of property tax said, well, I'll build on the site, site next to it. And that helps our, and that helps our pro forma as we're looking at the benefits of that. And I think this expression of interest right now, it's not, it's just saying, hey, is there, is there a dance partner out there? And is there somebody who wants to do the stance? Then we can figure out how that works. And we can we can start saying, hey, are we going to have a serious conversation about this performing arts center? Or are we going to put money in our incentives in order to make this possible? But I don't see the point of doing that if there's nobody that's, that's interested in this. And something I would point out is something that we've asked in here is for any conditions that a potential developer might place on this land. So they'd have the ability, my understanding based on questions of committee is, somebody would have the ability to come back and say, yes, I'm interested in this, but you have to commit to building the starting performing arts center within the next five years, or I'm interested in doing this, but you need to have enough money set aside for me to fully subscribe towards incentives. So I think that this is one of those things that is a real chicken and egg question, which I appreciate, but I do support us seeing if there's any dance partners out there before we figure out if we want to put some money into the egg. Okay. Thanks very much for that close. Councilor Bressy. Um, so open the vote. All those in favor of the motion. Okay. And I see uh, all council members, those on Zoom and in the council chambers, in favor. That motion is unanimous, carried unanimously. Um, council Bresse, anything else that you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes? Sorry, I. Sorry, Councillor Plot. Sorry, Mayor Given. I'm just wondering if I can make a follow up motion regarding this expression of interest or if this would be an appropriate sure, time. Sure, yeah, if there's other business rising, sure. So, just in light of my, my I do, I did support the motion because I'd love to see something happen here, but I do think we're running, a, as far as getting a dance partner, it's easier to get a dance partner if they know what we're willing to do. And so, I would like to, to make a motion that it direct, direct administration to bring back to the appropriate standing committee um, a report of what potential three Ps the city would be interested in looking at. And the reason I'm asking that is I think it's up to us to actually let industry know what we'd accept. If we're looking for three Ps and we're specifically saying three Ps, it's super scary to think about trying to govern a government with ideas when we don't know what they're even going to approve. I also think it's important for us, if this is such a vital piece of our downtown, I think it's very important for us to be stewards of it and think about what would be a great fit for this piece of land from our, from our side. So if somebody comes with a great idea to us right now and pitches it to us, we're going to debate on whether it's good or bad without any merit of did we want a seniors facility there? Did we want another type of facility on this location? We wanted to incentivize it. So I'd love to see this built out, but I think without the city having a really good conversation about what we're willing to invest, if we are willing to invest financially or what we're willing to invest in, greatly hinders whether we'll get, truly get a 3P or not. So I'm hoping you guys will support this motion. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Plott. So I see uh, Councillor Clayton and then Councillor Bressy. Councillor Clayton first and then Councillor Blackburn. Thanks, Mary Gavin. Um, I appreciate where you're going with this, Councillor Plot. I guess my concern is is um, narrowing down the scope a bit. And so, um, 
to look at what's possible in a P3 uh, could be quite an onerous task. Uh, at this time, there's uh, different possibilities out there. And, and I think from my recollection of the conversation at committee level, um, administration was very clear that they were willing to have conversations with people that were interested in the expression of interest, that the process right now, although it may seem vague on the surface, uh, there's a lot of opportunity for a, um, a dance partner, as you call it, to come back with um, options. And at, the, and at that point, we can consider, um, you know, is it a senior complex? Is it a um, an affordable housing complex? Is it a assisted living complex? Is it truly just a, an office tower? And, and so uh, depending on if, where you want to go with it, I don't think that we want to pigeonhole ourselves too much. I, I, I really support the P3 model. Um, but just to say we're open to P3s and ask administration to come back with options, I, I just worry that that's a, a more of an on onerous task than we're looking for at this point. Thanks. Okay. Thanks, Councillor uh, Clayton, Councillor Bressy, then Councillor Blackburn. Yeah, thank you. I I appreciate where you're going with this, but I I think where I have troubles with this is I don't think it's on administrations come and say, hey, city, these are the P3s we're gonna we're gonna accept. I think it's on council to say, hey, here's a here are some priorities in our community that we really want to deliver on, and we as council feel that a P3 might be the best way to way to explore explore this and so i'm worried about sending administration away to do work when we haven't had this conversation as a council yet so if i'm having trouble picturing what the motion might be but if there if there was a motion that was start that was starting that conversation with council i think i'd absolutely support that motion but i'm not ready to task administration to do work until we've had a council conversation about it because i just don't want to waste their time if they're going to come back with things that we've got no appetite for Thanks, Councillor Bressy. Councillor Blackburn. Thank you, Mary Gibbon. Um, you know, I'm a proponent of, of 3P projects as well, and I've seen them work very well uh, in our own city. Um, I think, however, uh, Councillor Pollock, that uh, it would be premature. Uh, we're in, in, in an exploratory state right now, and uh, uh, if, if we were really anxious to get this property developed and we wanted to be uh, really forward about encouraging uh, certain kinds of, of development, then uh, it might be the right thing to do. But since we're just in an exploratory situation at the moment, I don't think that we need to pursue uh, what you're suggesting unless one of the proponents um, for, or sorry, one of the applicants for uh, for a project uh, says to us, hey, what about uh, a 3P? And then would be the time to have a good hard look at that. Thank you. Okay, thanks, Councillor Blackburn. I don't see anybody else for discussion and debate, so I'll go back to Councillor Plot to close. Uh, thanks, Member Given. I just, I guess I want to look at this, and, and we're trying to sell land right now, and I want to remind everybody to sell land, we're trying to attract a buyer. And when you look at the summary of proposed development things, we're asking them to do basic elevations, to do a uh, recovery to the or a benefit to the community. Um, we're asking them to do design drawing or just some de de detail. There's a good chance a proponent could be 30 to 50 to upwards of $100,000 just to put in an application of interest. No guarantee they're going to get anything yet. No guarantee on funding anything else. I just would love to see us set them up to have an opportunity to come and talk to us about a 3P on that same thing because it certainly would change the imagination of businesses that might or developers that might look at this piece of land if they know the city had the appetite. Um, maybe maybe the report's coming back saying we don't have any appetite but we'd be willing to finance up to five million dollars. Whatever administration's coming up with, I can appreciate council should have a conversation about this as well and I really hope we do. But we always say, well, but we're not the experts. We want administration's opinion. So when I try to go the other way and say, hey, well, let's get administration write the report and tell us what they think that we need as an organization and what they think we need as a community and what might align through economic development through three Ps, why wouldn't we let them have, do that on our behalf? I'm not saying this has to happen today. And I, don't, I didn't put a date on it, if you guys will notice. I just said, come back. This might take them five months to come back with. I'm fine with that because I don't think in the next four or five months we're going to see a lot. But we also know how hard it is for organizations to deal with government. And for an organization to have a brilliant idea to come with us and say, hey, we think this is a slam dunk, but we need this 3P to happen. No more on a list. Can you imagine how honestly quickly that'll go through a process? 
And if that went through a process, was that fair to the next proponent that finally, that they stepped up and jumped in because there was an opportunity to get three piece because somebody did all that work on their behalf? Because the, the, I, exp I was okay with the expression of interest. I think it's the wrong path to go. I've supported it because I think we need to get something moving on this land. But if we're really gonna try it, give some teeth to it. Give it some options for people that wanted to buy and develop this land, some ability to actually make the cash work on it. Or else it's gonna be an expression of interest that'll be sitting here for years and years and years. It's been sitting there for years now. So just because we put an expression of interest doesn't change it unless we're gonna put some teeth to it. So please reconsider why you're not supporting this. If it's just because you think it's too much work for administration, I never put a date on it. Let's let them come back with what they think is an ideal time. And let's go with that. But let's show industry that we're serious about making a piece of land, this piece of land work for them in whatever capacity, because we need development in this downtown corridor. Thanks, Councillor Plott. Um, I see the, uh, he's sitting next to me here and has nudged me. The city manager uh, had uh, some advice or a perspective from administration, uh, Mr. Galante. Okay, thank you. Thank you, Mr. Mayor. Um, just wanted to, to, to provide a little bit of context in terms, in terms of a potential uh, public-private partnership um, for this site. So a, a P3 is, is one, of the, one of the ways, one of the methods that uh, um, we have available to finance uh, this, this project. It's public contribution from municipality, private contribution from a from potential developer. And uh, it's, it's just one way to do it. Um, I think at, that, at this stage, um, we're not looking for a detailed engineering design or, or um, detailed drawings on this. It's mostly a high-level concept. And the, the main intent, what is the main use, would be you know, a, a percentage of the space for uh, offices, or for residential, for commercial, restaurants, whatever it is, at, at that level. Um, and if the willingness to, is the municipality to contribute some funding to enter into a P3 model, I think for us, for administration, will be will be important initially to know at an order of magnitude a cost estimate from from a from a proponent. So if the proponent, after um, jotting down some some drawings at a high level and and coming up with an order of magnitude estimate, uh, just to put an example. It's a, it's a you know it's a 50 million dollar construction. Then the discussion is that the municipality is, is willing to consider a potential P3, and what is the maximum level of contribution based on factors, for example, so our borrowing capacity. Uh, what would be the maximum amount of contribution that the municipality may may put into into this site? So the, the doors are open for a potential public uh, private partnership for sure. Uh, I would suggest that first we would like to hear the at least the order of magnitude for an estimate for construction in order to then trigger some recommendations from administration to council about to, to up to what amount uh, uh, could be reasonable to to contribute on the on the public side of the of the partnership. So I just wanted to provide some context about the uh, the overall financial model. Thank you. Okay. Thank you, Mr. City Manager. Um, then we will go to the vote. Uh, Councillor Plot's motion to uh, direct administration to bring back to the appropriate standing committee um, information on potential P3 partnership ideas for that site. Uh, all those in favor? I see, I see two in favor, Councillors Palat and Thiessen, and opposed? I see, uh, thank you, and I see the balance of council members, councillors Minhas, Blackburn, Bressy, Friesen, Clayton, and myself opposed. So, and O'Toole, oh, excuse me, thank you, that's why. And Councillor O'Toole, Sorry, yep, I had to go all the way around the council chambers. Thank you, Councillor O'Toole. So that motion does not carry. Um, Councillor Bressy, was there anything else that you wanted to uh, address from that set of minutes? Yeah, thank you, Mayor Given. It was a busy committee meeting, if we, even if we didn't end up kicking a lot of business to council quite yet. Uh, a few things to highlight from our director service update is just more trees are going in across the across city as part of our fall program to make sure we're replacing stock that's reached end of its life, but also make sure that we've got some good diversity against, against diseases and against pests so that uh, we don't lose too much stock in the future. So I like to hear about trees going in there. They're great to have more of. We got an industrial attraction strategy 
presented to us. So the cities with the work the, with the work of a consultant that's got a lot more experience than we've got locally with attracting large industrial projects. Our administration's come up with a strategy that was presented to committee and um, I'd encourage council, if you haven't read it yet, to take a look at some of the work plan we've got for Economic Development Department now going forward. Something that's very near and dear to some residents' hearts is we got an update on turf naturalization across the, across the city. Uh, what we heard was that this year about 30 hectares of land were naturalized. That's about 4.1% uh, of, the, of the land that the city used to mow. And we heard about some of the benefits of naturalization, including some of the savings from mowing, some of the savings on equipment, some of the save, some of the savings on stress of our stormwater system as it retain as it retains water. But there was also some conversation about the consequences that natural naturalization has on the people that use the land. And something I was excited to hear about in committee is that there is going to be. Uh, it doesn't sound like a full mowing, but administration has committed to doing some mowing of at least the Toboggan Hills in Mission Heights that have received some. Concern from residents, so I was excited to hear that. It's conversations uh, about secondary suites. Uh, Build Grand Prairie came forward with an amendment they'd like to see us make to our land use bylaw. And basically, the what happened at committee was we said, yes, we're very interested to talk about this administration. Go and please do some work and come back to us with some data about what this might look like. And so we're going to be having a conversation about secondary suites coming up. And then the final one, and this was exciting to me, we had a updating our canola to key project, which is a lot of staff efforts going into taking from land when you have a canola field and you apply for all the permits, you do all your building and eventually you hand over a key to the person who's buying that house or that industrial shop or whatever it is. There's a lot of times you need to touch the city in that process. There's a lot of forms you need to fill out. There's a lot of times you have to pay a fee. There's a lot of time you have to wait as something sits on a city employee's desk somewhere. And we got some good updates about efforts our staff have made and are making to create a lot less work, both for the people applying for permits and also for our own staff, which will hopefully speed up construction times. It'll save some expenses for the people who are building in our city, and it'll save taxpayers money as we spend less time processing forms. And so not one of the most exciting things in the world saying, hey, we're making government more efficient, but one of the most important things we can do is make government more, more efficient. So that was our very busy committee meeting. Okay, thanks very much, Councillor Bressy. Uh, next up is the inf sorry is the uh, Community Services Committee and Councillor Friesen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I will move that Council adopt the minutes of the Community Services Meeting held Tuesday, September first, twenty twenty, as presented. Councillor Friesen, any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Are there any errors or omissions or things we need to correct before we adopt them? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor. Thank you, and that motion carries unanimously. Councillor Friesen. Thank you. There is a motion arising, and um, I move that Council approve proceeding with renovations to Revolution Place, consisting of paint in the lobby spaces, upgrading the point of sale system, and enhancements to the security screening system, with an estimated cost of twenty, uh, sorry, two hundred thousand dollars. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Any discussion or debate on that motion? Seeing none, uh, then I'll go to Council Reason if you'd like to speak to it. I, I would like to. Thank you, Mayor Given. And um, I, why I really want to speak to it is to let uh, our residents know we've been back and forth a little bit about this, and um, you may be aware that it is it. We've moved that some major renovations come to budget deliberations, and. Uh, we will be reviewing that. But what we've asked for here and what um, has been presented to us is to really use resources wisely, minimize any throwaway costs that are associated with these improvements. And um, that is the estimated cost, which is a, a generous estimate, my understanding, uh, or what, what we were told at that meeting. And um, one thing that's important about this as well that is uh, I really appreciated Miss Ridgeway bringing forward was the idea of the security screening. Um, part of what's included in this is the the intent to be able to do security screening with what we imagine may be COVID uh, measures coming up. So as we start to get events and entertainment back uh, on in in live. Um, 
uh, in real life, we, w we may experience some of those costs. So that's included in here. So thank you. Thanks, Councillor Friesen. Uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, then I will call for the vote. All those in favor? Thank you, and that motion is unanimous. Uh, Councillor Friesen, anything else that you want to highlight from that set of minutes? You bet. A couple of fun things. Storm training camp is on now and I believe goes till September 11th. I believe they started uh, August 25th. Um, also at the Twin Ice Arenas, while, while the ice was out, um, the RCMP took advantage of that and did some police dog training in the, in the Twin Ice Arenas there. So that's just a fun, um, wonderful way that they were able to um, help their members on four legs uh, keep us all safe. Uh, indoor cycling is now available at the Coke Centre. There are stationary bikes with uh, virtual scenery via uh, on screen, so you can take a ride through some fantastic scenery, take advantage, ad advantage of that. They can be instructor-led or used individually, so contact the Coke, Coke Centre for that. Um, transit, we have uh, online this week some new, the, the smaller style electric buses and that's just in time for the return to school as well, which is important because administration did work with the Catholic school district to provide busing for students out of Royal Oaks, I believe, in the Royal Oaks area. And uh, coupled with that, of course, of course, students are going back to school wearing masks and the expectation of the city is now that uh, you are wearing masks on transit as well. So that's in effect now. And I want to round it out with um, something pretty exciting from Councillor O'Toole. He talked to us a little bit about low cost um, general recreation buildings and uh, so we will um, bring that also into our budget deliberations coming up this fall. Thank you. Thanks Councillor Friesen. Um, then we'll move on to the Corporate Services Committee meeting and Councillor Minhas. Thank you, Mayor Milgiven. Uh, I move the Council adopt the minutes of uh, Corporate Service Committee meeting held on Tuesday, September 1st, 2020, as presented. Thanks, Councillor Minhas. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, uh, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favour? That motion carries unanimously. Councillor Minhas, anything you wanted to highlight from that set of minutes? Uh, just a couple of things. Assessment and taxation, the new COVID tax deadline was over on August 31st. Penalty will be leaved outstanding balance beginning to, to after September 1st. Accessory and forcing growth projection 2021. Finances administration is working for information regarding to reserve level report back to committee the deadline October 1st to be summit application for the capital accumulation fund and cooperative effect efficiency and strategy innovation administration is working with the county on the volunteer based math campaign so that's my report today okay thanks very much councillor Minhas uh, and we'll go to item 7.5 and councillor O'Toole who I think was uh, pinch hitting for us with the Protective and Social Services Committee meeting. Councillor O'Toole. Sorry, Councillor O'Toole, you have to turn the microphone at that station on, on your own. Yeah. Thank you. I move that Council adopt the minutes of the Protective and Social Services Committee meeting held Tuesday, September 1st, 2020, as presented. Thanks very much, Councillor O'Toole. Any discussion or debate on that set of minutes? Seeing none, then I'll call for the vote. All those in favor? And I'll just say again, all those in favor, Councillor? Okay, I see uh, all council members in chambers in favor and Councillor Blackburn in favor. <laughs> Councillor Minhas, uh, are you voting in favor? Yes. Okay, and Councillor Minhas in favor. So that motion is unanimous. Thank you. Uh, Councillor O'Toole, anything you want to highlight in that set of minutes? Just to highlight uh, the director's area update, uh, we had a verbal report and just some of the items are community social development, supportive housing community engagement was scheduled for last week. Uh, enforcement services, officer resources will provide support to the mobile outreach program. Administration has directed the bike patrol units to 
augment traffic units and provide a more active presence in school zones over the coming weeks. And uh, the RCMP, after a month-long investigation, a successful drug search warrant was concluded with two arrests made. Narcotics, cash, and two illegal firearms were seized. Thank you. Okay. Thanks, Councillor Tool. Thanks for that update. Um, that handles all of our committee business. We have uh, no, you know, I, I will just acknowledge actually here we're on to correspondence and while we have no formal correspondence on our council agenda, I think it's probably fair to acknowledge that all members of council have been receiving a significant amount of correspondence by email uh, with respect to the mask bylaw. Um, that is up for consideration this afternoon. So um, although those ones aren't making it into the formal uh, documentation, and boy, you know, I'm thankful that we're not printing all of those out because that would be a lot of trees, um, but we should just acknowledge for the public the council members are receiving uh, the emails that have been sent to all of us, uh, and all members of council, I think, are reading and seeing those. So I think just a worthwhile acknowledgement that while we might not have a formal written letter that was posted, uh, council members are seeing the correspondence that's coming to us. Uh, we have no notices of motion this evening. Um, and, oh, sorry, excuse me, uh, delegation business. We did have uh, one delegation. Uh, I think it would be appropriate uh, to receive that for information, recognizing uh, Councillor Thiessen. Thank you, Mayor Given. I would move that we receive the delegation's uh, presentation for information. Okay. Mary, I'm at the blank table. <laughs> okay. Thanks very much, Invisible Councillor Thiessen. Uh, <laughs> Okay, uh, thanks for that motion, Councillor Thiessen. Uh, any discussion or debate? Seeing none, I'll call for the vote. All in favor? Uh, all in favor of that motion to receive for information? That motion carries unanimously of all council members uh, on Zoom and in the council chambers. Um, with that, we had no notice of the motion, and so we will enter our recess. We will return for our evening session at 6 p.m., uh, where we will start with scheduled delegations and uh, then move into unfinished business and the consideration of the temporary mandatory face covering or mask bylaw. Thank you very much, everybody. We are in recess. <laughs>